say Dr. Okay. 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 Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I wanted to introduce Dr. Susan Elwood. Um, she's going to be giving a presentation today. Um, this lecture series is hosted in collaboration with the Center for Faculty Excellence and uh, the Elite Graduate Program. Um, Dr. Elwood received her doctorate degree um, in Educational and Instructional Technology from Texas Tech University, and she's been teaching here at the University um, Educational Technology for since 2002. And she, <laughs> and she was one of my professors. I graduated from um, the Educational Technology Master's Program. Um, her areas of interest include technology integration um, with K-12 environments, digital social networks, uh, portable computing environments, project-based service learning, and also electronic por portfolios. Um, Dr. Elwood is also one of our first recipients of our Elite Graduate Program Travels Program uh, Funding Program. <laughs> and um, she uh, submitted a proposal and we awarded her supplemental funding to go to San Diego, California to attend the site conference, which is the Society for Information Technology and Education Conference in San Diego. And uh, she's going to be talking today about pedagogical um, trends for technology, which is pretty much just a reflection of what she learned at the conference. So please help me welcome Dr. Susan Elwood. Today, um, I helped get to that idea of having people give presentations. That was my idea. Being videotaped and put over the internet was not my idea, but that's okay. <laughs> and um, what I want to show today is also a model for other faculty or students who go off to <coughs> conferences. I find it important in K-12 K-16 environments that we come back and share what we've seen, what we've learned. And so uh, what I'm modeling is I've taken some excerpts from some key notes, um, key speeches that I saw, key people I saw, key uh, theories that came out of the conference. I got, I was, because of their funding, I'm very, very grateful for that funding, I was able to attend all five days of the conference. And so I have more notes than I can possibly share in the time I'm going to share them. But I wanted to synopsize some key themes that I saw coming out, uh, especially for our environment with higher ed. And I was just speaking with a couple people before saying um, adult learning and K-12 learning is starting to blend even more, mostly because our technologies are blending. And uh, we'll look at a couple theories here that will show that. There might be some key terms and key phrases people like to delve into later and find some more uh, deep web research on it. Maybe even Google some surface web and find out what MIT and those other people are doing. Uh, so let me present a little bit of some of the shared notes. And I gave a digital storytelling workshop or round table at the conference and so and also upon the request I have some laptops up here if you have I saw an iPad over there if you have uh, your laptop with you when we get to the uh, portion of the workshop or brown bag whatever we're calling this uh, where there's more participatory um, I want to get you into voice thread anybody use it my students okay. <laughs> <laughs> would like to get you into that, or if you've been into VoiceThread and you want to go with us some more of the links that I'm quickly presenting at the front part here, or some of the theories I'm quickly presenting at the front part, then you can have time to do that as well, and we'll share. So that's what we're doing here for the next hour, is uh, playing with those two things. And what I'm using here is Google Docs. How many of you use that? All right, a little bit more up there. <laughs> and uh, Google Docs is, for those of you that aren't sure, this is basically something like Microsoft Office, I'd rather say Open Office, but something like Microsoft Office where there's basic integrated applications. You're going to, you're going to be seeing the word processing uh, feature of it as well as a PowerPoint type feature, the presentation feature. So uh, great for collaborative learning. You can invite whoever you want in. I have a folder and I've opened the link up to anyone with the link. And I've given it, Julie doesn't know this, but I've given it to Julie and Lisa just about 10 minutes before I came over here. So. <laughs> they can have the uh, link and post it wherever they're posting everything else so that you can take a look at these resources later. I've also used it just so that um, you can view it, but just so you know when you design your own Google Doc, you can allow anyone with the link to view and edit, or if you want to invite people in as collaborators, uh, as editors, they can co-edit with you and have more options and uh, use more features. I like to explain the tools I use once in a while. Also it goes uh, along with the theories we're looking at about uh, collaborative global learning. 
uh, before I get started into the informal learning, one thing I didn't put up in here was just the overall theme of what I saw from SITE, Society for Information Technology and Teacher Education. This also includes people from K-12 environments, but it includes people from higher ed, people from uh, corporate businesses. And so as we look at learning environments, we need to start thinking of learning environments and not isolate so much by age level. And two things that I saw coming out that I said, yes, I know, because I've been pushing these things for years. And um, it was interesting. We had one panel the last day where we had MIT, um, Harvard, a couple of major uh, corporations on this panel. And in the audience, it was the last day of the conference, yes, there was a little bit of slow attendance drizzling in, but uh, they did a quick poll, we had the clickers, they did a quick poll to figure out who the demographics are in their audience. Half of us were K-12 educators, or dealt with K-12, people like me dealing with professional ed. Half of us were um, adult educators. Half, uh, half of us were from the U.S. Half were from all over the world first half of my school. I meant to say half from the U.S., half from all over the world. Most of us were adult learning educators uh, because most of us are college professors that attend that. Um, you will have some of the K-12 educators as they bring their student groups when they have student showcases. And the last day was still more K-12 educators because that day was focused for that. When this panel started presenting, they used their clickers, got the demographics out of the way, and then they started to ask questions. How many of you have used inquiry-based learning? I don't have clickers, but I might use your hands. <laughs> How many of you have used inquiry-based learning in your learning environments? How many of you know what inquiry-based learning is? You're pretty confident about There we go. Let's start there. <laughs> I did not put that in here, but if you want to look into essential questions, you want to Google that. You'll find a lot about essential questions. You look into inquiry-based learning. Inquiry-based learning says we don't start from the bottom. We don't say, what's a volcano? No, no, no. We start from the top. And we say something like, <laughs> oh, i got to stick myself with the question. Um, how do, uh, what do you call it, like volcanoes and tsunamis, earthquakes, how do geographical, or, help me out here guys, <laughs> how do natural events, how do natural phenomena, how do natural events um, affect uh, the world? Could be an overall essential question. Because within that, I can get into volcanoes, I can get into tectonic plate shifting with earthquakes, and that, that can go into some unit questions, or if I'm a K-12, I might gear it more for social studies versus science, I could do it that way, or I could gear it more into the volcanoes versus the earthquakes, and then it come down to the unit um, content questions, where it's, uh, how is it a, how is an earthquake formed? And if I know it, <laughs> I don't know, but if I know it, I can just put out so many steps. That's a content question. So you look at essential unit content questions, you look at inquiry-based learning. So that's the question, and those of us in the field would be better knowing. <laughs> And so when they asked that question, yes, a lot of clickers went up, not hands, a lot of clickers went up, great response. How many of you use project-based learning? I won't go into a whole review of that, that's longer. How many of you use project-based learning? Okay. Um, look it up if you want to know more about it, there's too much there to, <laughs> to look up pbl.org. That's a really nice site to start with. Uh, that's where you do real-life projects, and you use that inquiry-based learning within it make it more meaningful, real life, service oriented, also service based learning, so you heard about that. So they were asking more delineated questions. They had about five questions on project based, service based, community service centered. And people were doing pretty good with that. And then they started asking, the next one is a very simple one to open it up to the world. They said, how many of you have used Skype in the past, or some kind of video, in the past year and had someone from some other country come in and collaborate with you or work with your students in a project. What do you think the response was? Yeah. Very little. And it kind of stayed at that very little rate for other questions they asked. They were asking how many of us were using the global interaction capabilities, not for the point of this. Yes, I have a Google Doc here, but I'm sharing it pretty much with this audience and whoever else will show up on that website. I'm basically emailing you a, a Word document. If I were truly using this as a collaborative thing, I would have some inter